Welcome to science! A couple years back, someone on Reddit asked a question. Assuming kinetic energy is converted into heat, how hard do you have to slap a chicken to cook it? And with a little questionable math, Reddit came up with an answer. You'd have to slap the chicken at approximately 3,825 miles per hour, or just less than Mach 5. That's a little bit impractical, and so through the transformative power of the internet, the question slowly morphed into how many human-powered slaps would it take to cook a chicken, where the most commonly cited answer is about 23,000. This is the perfect setup for a YouTube challenge video, and so dozens have tried their hand and failed to cook a chicken using only slaps, with some going so far as to say it is completely impossible to do so. But to me, this seemed inconclusive. Somebody needed to get to the bottom of this once and for all, and it seemed like that someone was gonna be me. Since people are imperfect, I'd need a proper rig to test this scientifically. This math doesn't even factor in cooling from the environment. If we were gonna even warm this chicken up, let alone cook it, we were gonna need to be slapping way faster and more consistently than your average human could. This thing appears to be functional. Let's see if it actually works. All right. After completing the rig, I measured some chickens at my local supermarket and then built an enclosure that would keep the chicken contained during testing. That makes it sound like I'm using live chicken. It was time for a real test, and rather than witness this groundbreaking scientific research alone, I decided to live stream it. Hello, everybody. I'd like to introduce you all to what I've affectionately named the Meat Beater 9000. And we're gonna start it at the lowest speed. The hand I spent so much time creating instantly broke off, and I had to act fast in order to save the stream. Can I get a pog in the chat? Ambient temperature is 72. The chicken is currently a crisp 66 degrees. Delicious. The slapper started out at about five slaps per second, and slowly over time, we would increase it as the temperature began to plateau at each level. Time to turn it up. It's 75 degrees. It wasn't a fast process, but slowly and surely the temperature began to rise. Oh my god! 77! No! No! Oh my god, my guy, you think it's kind of working! So we kept pushing. Faster, and faster, and faster. That's insanity. The chicken's on a flat flag, so I'm gonna be rid of it. 86 degrees. We're at 88 degrees. We're at 88. All right, we'll crank it. We're gonna crank it one more. Yeah, okay, so eventually we hit the limit on this makeshift paddle, and it completely flew apart. But in the process, we'd done a pretty good job. I was pretty much ready to wrap this one, but the audience was not. Maybe I will try it again on a different day this week. And deep down, I knew they were right. We hadn't beaten the chicken, the chicken beat us. We'd proven you can't cook a chicken with 26,000 slaps, but we really found that we were asking the wrong question all along. Knowing slaps can raise the temperature, but that it's a function of frequency, not number, how fast do you have to slap a chicken in order to fully cook it? And more importantly, can you even do it without completely destroying the chicken in the process? To find out, I needed to optimize everything. First, I redesigned the mount, replacing the original friction-based mounting system with a set of galvanized steel brackets that mount directly through the slapper arm, combined with tempered spring steel connectors to dampen stress on the rig while still maximizing the transfer of force from the paddle to the chicken. I also wanted to help the chicken retain heat, but I didn't want to intervene too much in the chicken's cooking process. So in addition to sealing off every single gap with duct tape, I surrounded the entire cooking chamber in a healthy layer of foam insulation. And after a little bit of a bumpy start, 
the second live stream was well on its way. So the entire box is now surrounded by foam, and this should increase the amount of insulation we get. Let's start it up in about three, two, one. We have a current temperature of 64 degrees. people watching on my YouTube. Welcome to science! 75 degrees, holy crap! 77 degrees, let's go! Let's go! Let's go! Great did it! Oh, what happened? No, what? Are you kidding me? No, 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 no. That's not all right. Yeah, I did almost lose a hand. You know, don't don't worry about it. After troubleshooting, we found that a loose bolt created so much additional friction in the system that the motor oils completely overheated and melted, creating a number of internal shorts. The motor was gonna have to be completely replaced for the next version. We couldn't complete the test, but it was still clear from what we did see that the chicken doesn't radiate enough heat to make this insulation solution very effective, which is just as well, because it also looks like absolute dog shit. Ultimately though, we were still running into the same basic problem, which is that the chicken begins to turn into a paste well before you can ever fully cook it. I needed a different angle. In order to increase the temperature of anything, you need to be putting energy into the object faster than the environment is pulling energy out. Every degree of increase above ambient temperature requires exponentially more energy than the previous level required. What we're fighting against here is a concept called Newton's Law of Cooling, which states that the rate of heat loss of a body is directly proportional to the difference in the temperatures between the body and its surroundings. That's a bunch of word vomit, so let me explain this in normal terms. If I take a glass of boiling water and set it on the table, that water is eventually going to come to room temperature. But it's it's not going to come to room temperature at a linear rate. It's not going to say drop one degree per second over a couple of minutes until it's eventually at room temperature. What's going to happen is at first it's going to drop really, really quickly and then over time it's going to slow down. Where at first it might be dropping five degrees per second, eventually it's only going to be dropping half a degree a second or a quarter of a degree a second. We're basically fighting the same problem but in reverse. Imagine that you're trying to push a boulder up a hill, but the closer you get to the top, the steeper the hill gets. At first, pushing the boulder is pretty easy. The hill is almost flat, so even a little bit of force will get the boulder moving. As you climb, however, you have to push harder and harder to keep climbing, and at a certain point, you might not even be able to push hard enough to keep going any higher. This is the job that we've tasked to the Meat Beater 9000. Right now, the hill's just too steep for us to climb without destroying either the rig or the chicken itself. But what if we could make that hill a little bit shorter? I created a temperature-controlled slapping environment that simulates a hot summer day, using a hairdryer mounted to the board and then a clear shower curtain that creates an airtight bubble. I placed a digital thermometer inside to keep track of the air temperature, and then I ran the hairdryer intermittently to keep the environment balanced at about 100 degrees. We also preheated the chicken to 100 degrees using a warm water bath. By raising the ambient temperature and the starting temperature of our bird, we effectively chop off the top of Heat Mountain and give the meat beater a better chance to fully cook our chicken. Using a Variac for more precise speed control, we were ready to push this rig to the absolute limit. What's up, everybody? Here's what's going down. Chicken's inside, uh, we've preheated it. It's currently at about 88 degrees. So we're starting with the hair dryer. Start slow, take it from there. I think we need to increase the speed. Let's give her hell. All right, now we're in the chicken cooking business, boys. Let's go. It's not falling apart at all yet, which is a good sign. I'm just gonna keep cranking the speed because that's what it needs. That's the only way to heat it up more. How's the motor heat? Motor is ice cold, yes baby! I think it'll hit 120, but I'm thinking I should just give it more speed. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. What? Holy. How did we? That's just, that seems like a sign from the Lord.
I'm gonna get on the table and let's chat. Here is the uncooked underside of this chicken. The other side looks like that. It is much more cooked looking. Obviously not cooked all the way through, but you can really tell a difference. I don't know if I've got the heart to spend any more time with this project. I was broken. I would poured my heart and soul into this attempt, and even after getting the chicken to its hottest temperature ever, we were still walking away empty-handed. But I knew that if I quit right now, I'd be conceding victory to the chicken. So instead, working with a crack team of amateur engineers, we got to work on one final attempt. To maximize our slaps per second, we knew the rig needed a complete redesign. Minimizing the number of moving parts while also eliminating the Meat Beater 9000's wasteful upstroke. Naturally, this led us to reimagine my rotational slapper design, utilizing what I've dubbed a flap wheel. Instead of mounting stiff hands like originally intended, we'd use strips of heavy-duty rubber. Repeated failure, a Discord member and channel patron ran a number of high-level technical simulations based upon my observations from the original slapper to determine just how much power we'd need to be dumping into the system in order to heat the chicken. The final rig, dubbed the Poultry Punisher, was over 50 pounds of pure, unadulterated chicken slapper. But even with a 6.5 horsepower motor to drive it, Cooking even a small portion of our chicken would require us to run this thing near its maximum speed. If we could push it to the limit, the poultry punisher should be able to cook at least a portion of our chicken. We covered all our bases, we did all the math, we examined every possibility, and we engineered like no one's engineered before. It all came down to this. I think this is gonna work. Here goes nothing. Go, yes! Do we have any temperature increase? None. The chicken is getting just completely destroyed. The cooking oil should help lubricate it. All right, here we go. The current temperature is 82 degrees, and it's dropping. That is not good. I'm gonna flip the chicken over. I think the other side is more resilient. All right, starting from 84. Have I seasoned the slapper? Of course the slapper has been seasoned. That's disgusting. I just got chicken all over myself. I have chicken on my glasses. The speed is very hard to adjust on this. Okay. I mean, it looks like the temperature's increased. We're at 86 now. Yeah, the integrity of the chicken is a problem. The temperature is going up. And back down. Yo, holy shit, this might actually working. Seventy five. Oh my god. Holy crap, you guys. There's just a f void where there once was chicken. If if that's not freaking paste, I don't know what is. Let me just give you a little little tour of what we're looking at here. Here is the chicken at the moment. The chicken's just gone. I mean, look, the, there's chicken on the bottom of the pallet. There's chicken on the top slabs of the pallet. There's chicken here. There's chicken on the mount. There's chicken on the chain. There's chicken on the wood over there. There's chicken on the sandbag. There is chicken on every part of this freaking thing, and it is absolutely disgusting. Where does this leave us? We got some really cool initial results. Warming a chicken 20 to 30 degrees above ambient temperature with nothing but the power of slaps is nothing to sneeze at. But to warm the chicken past this point, you need to add even more energy, which, while possible, also destroys the chicken in the process. This really looks like it should work on paper, but every time, our test showed the same thing. The chicken gets destroyed before you can get it up to temperature. And so, as much as it pains me to say this, this one ain't reality. If you want to join the crack team of amateur engineers I mentioned earlier, the Discord is linked down in the description. Or if you want to support the channel directly, you can also do so over on the Patreon. And please, 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 please share the video with anyone you think would be interested. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time. We have a solution. <laughs>
I mean, that looks pretty done to me. 